Well, look what we have here, guys. A very special guest. You might know him from a very, very small game. You might have played last year, God of War Ragnarok. Sindri himself, Adam J. Harrington, mate. It is a honor and a pleasure to have you on today, mate. How are you? Oh, man, Dan, uh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. How are you, by the way? How's your week been? I know you've been surfing lately. Yeah. I mean, you'd yeah. love it down here in Australia with, uh, oh, with some of the beaches, I, man. Yeah. Are you are you J Bay or is that South Africa? I think J Bay, South Africa. I was yeah. No. Of, so. Where where I'm in Melbourne, so we've got Bell's yeah. Beach, which is uh, the hot spot. Yeah. I've been to I've been to Sydney up the uh, the East Coast. I didn't get to Melbourne, and I regret it. But hopefully, the next time. Did you get to surf up there or you weren't into it at the time? I went in, uh, uh, is it Manly? Manly Beach? Yeah, yeah. I I technically surfed, but (laughs) at that time I wasn't that. I I mean, I'm still not very good, but at that time I really wasn't good. So you you can get up now? You're you're pretty good now these days Mm -hmm. or what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I can. I mean, I'm. You know, now it's a now it's a it's diminishing returns as you get older. It's just, <laughs> can I come close to what I did last year? But you know, yeah, I, I enjoy it. So, yeah. And is it true, mate? You before acting, you you did marine biology. Did I read that yeah. correctly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hence, uh, my my whale shark that's behind me on the wall. Um, yeah, I. Uh, you know, where I grew up, entertainment wasn't really a thing. And my parents were really concerned about me getting an education. And where I grew up was like a combo of produce farming and steel plants. So uh, I was always, I always loved the water, you know, obviously still do. And um, got my scuba diving license when I was 16 and then got into marine biology and did an undergrad in that and then a master's degree and then worked in my field for a little bit. And yeah, then, then I saw what the reality of that whole romantic career is. And uh, I, I didn't want to go on and do a PhD or anything like that. So I, and I'd always wanted to act and I thought, well, now or never, otherwise well, I'm going to regret it. What is the reality? I mean, what for people that don't know? Yeah. Well, I think when people think of marine biologists, they think of, you know, if you're old enough, the old Jacques Cousteau programs or coral reefs and all that stuff and and in, and in that way it really is just get your scuba diving license that's the best part of being a right biologist. yeah but after that um it's either running a lab or becoming a, a professor and running your own lab and teaching at a university or a lot of field work and you know not a lot of money so really okay uh, yeah and when i was coming through i was curator of an aquarium for a while and they're just the the future and the job prospects were different than than what got me into it. I got to do a lot of really cool outdoor collection stuff, but but I think what was really going on for me is ever since I was a kid, I'd wanted to act, and that that never went away. So I just hit an age where I thought it's now or never because I know what this is going to look like. And did you do any training? Did you go straight to LA? How oh, did no. you, how was, was your, um, yeah, yeah I was it? living, I was living off the coast on an Island off the West coast of Canada. And I, I moved to Vancouver. I put my scuba gear in storage and I'd been diving every single day and I put it in storage wow. and I didn't go in near the water, near an aquarium or near a university for two years. And I got a bartending job. And I got my ass handed to me very quickly because I was (laughs) snobby. You know, I've gone to university. I know everything. And boy, did I, but I learned quick about the workforce. And then, um, and then just started kind of scrambling for auditions and, and, you know, got lucky and just kind of worked from there. I think the, the cool thing was, is that where I went to school, it really specialized in figuring out a, a project and figuring out how to actually do it. And I kind of carried that right into acting. So I, I kind of saw where I wanted to go and then thought, okay, how do I get there? And just kind of try yeah. to go after. Was it, was it hard putting that, that gear away and leaving that, that world behind? Uh, it was, I did, I, I, I just kind of thought, uh, I really want to do this, but holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what am I, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> I really want to. I just really, really wanted to. So, but, oh yeah, it was, you know, 
it was tough. It was, uh, there was some, there was some <laughs> lean, there was some lean times in there. Now, growing up in Canada, I can't imagine what's the acting space like over there. Is it, is there much there or do you have to move over or? It was really good. So I was in Vancouver and that was the time that X-Files hit. Uh -huh. So uh, before that, they had a show called MacGyver. That was the biggest hit, the original MacGyver. And then X-Files hit and then things started to blow up. And because it's West Coast and it's it can be dark and a lot of rainy, it has a very spooky feel to it. So you'd get a lot of those, you know, teeny teenage horror movies coming in. And I think the final... What was the one where everybody just keeps dying, like it's their fate to die and they can't avoid it? Is that Final Destination? Final Destination. Those were shot in Vancouver. And Stargate, ah, okay. was, shot. Yeah. Stargate was shot in Vancouver. And The X-Files was shot in Vancouver. So there was a lot of there was a lot of products starting to happen up there. And I still have friends that that when I moved to the States just stayed there and they've had great careers. It's probably like, you know, Australia, you've got your your bread and butter shows that have just been on for a long time. And then you've yeah. got theater and the films that come there and, you know, Canada is similar to that. Yeah. I mean, do you remember your first, the first time you booked your first motion capture gig? Was that LA Noir or was that yeah. Battlefield or what was? No, yeah. it was, it was LA Noir was the, LA Noir was the first one that came along for me. And that was. That was years uh, ago now. That That's. That was. <laughs> That's like 2010, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It took two years to shoot it. Wow. Um, and it was kind of breakthrough technology. Oh, so yeah, it still it holds up to this day. I think the facial capture holds up. The facial, the, yeah. The body, the body movement does yeah. not. No, yeah. And that set was, I, I think it's 10 square miles accurate. 10 accurate. Like if you actually wanted to see what LA was like in the 1940s, or I forget what year it set, yeah, it was accurate to the time period. They did a, I think it was Bondi was the company. Amazing amount. They did an amazing amount of research for that game. And I know you're not a gamer, but when you booked that role, did you know much about the world of gaming? Were you excited no. about nothing? I was excited because of who I got to work with. I was excited uh, because um, the breakthrough in technology was really cool and they did a great job. Um sharing their enthusiasm and their curiosity with the cast. So we all felt like we were working on something really cool. Um, but as far as the, I, I remember I bought a console after the game came out to think yeah. I should try to get into this. And I bought a book. There's like a cheap book you can buy to help you play the game. And I couldn't even, <laughs> I couldn't even drive the car down the street. <laughs> and I, I just thought, yeah, no, this is, let alone I have a hard time, I mean, you're seeing me fidget now. I have a hard time sitting down <laughs> for a long period. You just want to be outside. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I understand, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a bit of a hiker as well? Do you like hiking yeah. at all? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 When I, so where I grew up, it was all uh, canoe tripping. Like you take yeah. a canoe with a portage and you're gone for three or four days at a time. And then that extended into trips into the Arctic for like two weeks and all that stuff. And then, uh, when I moved to Southern California, then I'd surfed a little bit before, but that really took off. And I had been a huge fan of that when I was a teenager anyway. So so is that hard, seeing as you love the outdoors, with this motion capture work, you're stuck indoors a lot of the time with, and you, you're imagining everything, you know? But but that's so much fun because you, really you get to be a kid. Mm -hmm. You totally get to be a kid. And, it, and it's kind of funny because everybody's in these Velcro skin tight suits. I mean, there's just no shame. You, just, <laughs> you can't have an ego. Um, yeah. And, and everybody, especially with the God of War stuff, everybody is so passionate about it. And so everybody wants to tell the, uh, the best story they can, especially with Ragnarok because of the success of the first one, that it's, it's a lot of fun because everybody's just going for it. And uh, I think it was um, James, crap, Avatar. James Cameron, yeah. James Cameron said, you know, as far as CGI, he said, I don't, he said, I don't care about it, one actor staring at a CGI. He said, give me two actors. And what I'll film is their reaction to the CGI, like their reaction off of each other. And that's, that's where the magic is. And that, that's 
kind of what it feels like video games are to me. I mean, it's also fun. You're, it's like your kids. You're driving in a car that looks like a go-kart made out of, you know, pipe material. And the steering wheel is just a piece of cardboard. And Yeah. yeah I, I love it. You, seeing as you, you've been involved for so long now, what, what was the big differences from L.A. Noir versus, you know, recently with Ragnarok? I, I can imagine the, the tech has advanced, you know, a hell of a lot. The tech is huge. I remember on L.A. Noir, if you had to go to the bathroom, you had to, like, they knew. Because <laughs> you had to. You had to you there was had no to, zipper. There's no zipper. Oh, no. Somebody help you out of the Velcro. So if you went to the bathroom, that's fine. But when you came back, you had to let somebody know and they know exactly what you did. Um, <laughs> I think the the suits are basically the same. I think the material is a little more breathable now. It's still the ping pong balls. The way yep. they put the dots on your face has changed over the years. And the big change is, seems every time I go in is the head rig. Camera. Yeah. The camera. Yeah. And then... It's also how they're filming it, where when we were doing L.A. Noir, you could obviously see all the little infrared sensors all over the place. Um, whereas when we were doing Ragnarok, it's just a big, giant volume. You know, they're mm -hmm. filming the cameras and all that stuff, but you don't actually you're not as aware of where they're where the sensors are that are picking up the data. So they didn't have the facial capture rig for L.A. Noir at the time? It was just dots? It was, yeah, because we, God, it's going along. What, going I know, on. I'm, I'm facial, stretching you. They didn't, <laughs> it's all good. They didn't have the facial capture stuff. So once we had physically blocked all the scenes and acted them out, then you had to go in and sit in this weird room that felt <laughs> like it was out of 2001 by yourself, <laughs> surrounded by cameras, and it was freezing cold because of the, the data and yeah. the generated. And you had to redo every single line of dialogue you had. And I think the script was 300 pages long. Really? So then they would glue wow. your head onto your body. And that's how they recorded. They'd figured out whatever wow. program or algorithm or whatever to convert this, this photographic video image into into something the computer can turn into a two-dimensional image so that was filmed separately and then they glued your head on your body so you you enjoyed your time on la noir i'm guessing i mean you wouldn't be I doing did. this now if you didn't I did i, yeah. I thought roy earl was such a repugnant <laughs> character um that it was a lot of fun to play because you didn't have to there was nothing about that guy that you worried about being likable and he didn't no. and roy <laughs> Roy didn't give a shit if he was likable or not. Mm. Um, I, th I think he was a very good cop. Um, I think he was a very, you know, dark person. Um, yep. The only tricky thing at that time was that Bondi wanted it accurate to the period. And they encouraged everybody to use language that was accurate to the period. Uh, yeah. And we had to bring up to them that you can't, this isn't, there's nothing cool about this. Mm. This isn't about accuracy. And they're like, yes, but that's the way you Americans talked at the time. I knew we were going to have to go back and retweak dialogue because there were some things that was just. Is that a tricky situation? I didn't like it because mm. I didn't think there was anything. I, I, I think there was another way of, of telling the story accurately without really crossing into some really disgusting language mm, yeah. and attitudes that just that I, I I just didn't think ever had a place. But there was a couple of times where I apologized to people before we shot. Yeah, really. And just said I'm I just showed them my dialogue and I'm like, I'm and yeah. they were great. I'm like, no, bring it, because wow. that's 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 how you would talk. But I'm glad in the end they got rid of all they didn't, they didn't include that stuff. I don't think in a video game, I think the risk is, is that it's just not needed, is it? It's just it's not needed and you risk romanticizing it. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. And so moving on from there, you worked on Battlefield. That was your next yeah, sort of Battlefield big game. Battlefield. Yeah. And what do you remember from that one? Because that was quite a big game at the time, I remember. I remember how much fun I were I, I had fun working on that. Um I think I'd known Nick anyway. Uh, the others I hadn't known, but it was just it was just a lot of fun. And and I remember it being much easier than L.A. Noir because of all the extra stuff. Like you know, they weren't 
I still don't remember if we were wearing rigs. It was probably 2013, 2014. Yeah, yeah I don't... Easy and relatively quick. Yeah. And then God of War 2018, what yeah. do you remember from just the reception? Because oh. it was a moment in time. I, I still remember it to this day that, that when it came out, I, I was lucky enough to have an early copy and and I knew it was just, I was enthralled the whole time. I just couldn't believe I was playing and I knew it was my game of the year. And, and when the reviews mm-hmm. came out, just amazing reviews. I remember watching Corey, I believe he like, recorded his first reaction and I think he just started crying. I mean, it was just such a moment. You remember everything about that? God, that was, that was 10 years ago. Isn't that crazy? What? We, yeah. Sunny you started was, 10 years ago? Yeah. Cause Sonny. My was, God, that's crazy. I think, I think we started shooting that in 2014. Wow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. So, I remember I remember that I was still so new to the video game world that I didn't understand the level of the impact it was having. Then when it was winning all this stuff, I just remember being really excited and thinking it was really cool, but not fully understanding how rare and how much this game was going to stand the test of time in that way because it was still fairly new to me that I just thought, oh, this is, this is amazing and wonderful, but I didn't really have, a, have an idea of what it represented because I wasn't as experienced in the gaming world. Mm. And then as the game came out and after it came out, I think when Ragnarok, when we were shooting Ragnarok and when, when Ragnarok came out and did as well as it did, it, it really... Um, it really sunk in how special it was and how these things don't happen often. You, you, you work your ass off to, to produce something and then you hope it hits, but then when it becomes something on top of that, that doesn't really have anything to do with anybody except the people playing the game. It becomes theirs. At least that's the way I think about it. And it may never happen again. And that was the wonderful thing about Ragnarok and the response to it and everything was was um, feeling proud of what everybody had accomplished, but also um, recognizing that I was getting to be a part of something that might never happen again for me anyway. And 2018 is a lot different to Ragnarok because you get a lot more to sink your teeth into with Ragnarok, don't you? I mean, it has been a while since I played 2018, so bear with me, but um, in that game, there's significantly less dialogue and and work isn't there? There is, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I think I think going into the first one, I just remember thinking, oh, okay, this is kind of Shakespearean. He's the, you know, the the comic relief. Yes, he's there. They come and they get their weapons done, but this is to provide a little bit of levity to the heaviness of all that stuff. And that's what we did. And I kind of planted my little seeds on why it was funny and how it's funny for Sindri and the relationship with Brock and all that stuff. And that's that's what it what it was. So I didn't know, I didn't know going into Ragnarok what was going to happen. We, we, contracts were signed, signed up. Yes, absolutely. And I just thought it was going to kind of be more. The same the- thing. Yeah. No, yeah. you did not really. We were going to get much character development. Wow. Um, uh, I sat down with Matt and Eric. We went for lunch and they walked me through the game. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, That's damn, a long that, lunch, man. That was my yeah, <laughs> and that was my reaction. Yeah, I can imagine. How do you not just sit there and just start crying? There's so much emotional. Yeah, well, I, I mean, yeah. When they when they told me what was going to happen with with Brock, my first question was, "Is have you have you told Robert?" Yeah, and they said, "Yeah," and that was. I mean, it still gets me just just the fact that. You know, that that was hard just because I love Robert so much. It's that wasn't that hard to. I mean, you know, you have to you have to do your job and tell the story and go to those uncomfortable places. But you know, that initial way in was not hard to to think. Oh God, this is this is going to be this is going to be this is going to be rough. Um, but I just remember thinking, uh, "Holy shit, this is sad." 
And then I wanted to throw up <laughs> because I realized that I had, I had a responsibility in pulling this off. Oh man, you, it was on your shoulders in many respects. It was, well, my part was on my shoulders uh, with, yeah. you know, you're not up there alone. Like, yes, no, I, brought no. in, I brought in my ideas and I did everything, but Matt had ideas and Eric had ideas and, you know, Corey threw, through Eric um, ideas about the script as yeah. he's talked about structure wise, what had to happen. But after that, it just kind of felt collaborative, but they were, they were wonderful. They were wonderful with me because they, they, they just kind of said, just go just so I would bring in ideas and always check with them. And, and then we went with it, but yeah, it was, I just felt I had, there was such a responsibility to get the story right. Because if that character arc wanted to happen is that you, you would watch Sindri's character arc and the, and the gamer, the player would be like, I don't buy this. No way. I don't buy it. I feel like I'm having this, this character transformation shoved down my throat. So we knew that that was the, or I did anyway, that, that, that we, you know, that was what we didn't want to happen. What was your first conversation with, with Robert? Like, I'm curious when you first found out, do you call oh, him and say, are you feeling my, <laughs> like, what well, do you remember that? Uh, God, I don't know if I can. I just remember we, us, both of us, I have a vague memory of both of us just saying, yeah. I said, so I talked to Matt and it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think it was just a lot of that. Sounds. Yeah. And he was the one that kind of, he's like, yeah, but it's good for the story and, you know, we'll, we'll kill it. And, you know. Do you also, do you also roll reverse and go, oh, this could have been me. How would oh. I feel? Oh, I thought, I thought it, I, I thought, <laughs> my thought was, my thought was, is every, everyone's going to say it should have been Sindri. <laughs> I think it's Bill Brock. That's, yeah. Of course, that's all, that's all ego. Um, but no, it could have easily been me. It could have been anybody. That's, mm. you know, that's the writing. But I don't, I don't, I certainly didn't, I don't remember having any, I remember having a little feeling of not or anything like that, but just even more so we got to, we got to really, we got to do this right. And when you read that script or when they go through the story, is there anything else that stood out to you besides obviously those scenes um, with Brock, the funeral and the the death, but were there any other scenes that stood out where you were maybe a bit nervous or excited or whatever the emotion was that stood out to you? Like, I'm going to have to nail this one. <clears throat> I mean, they're all a bit like that, aren't they? <laughs> um, the writing's so damn good. Well, the writing is so damn good, Dan. And I think that was the the wonderful thing is, is when you, when you get good writing, when the bones are there, you just kind of don't fuck it up, stand in its way. But to your point, I was really looking forward to getting to develop the relationship between Sindri and Sonny or Sindri and Atreus. Atreus. Yeah. And getting to work with Sonny. Um, did you get to work with, did you build a relationship in the first game with him or more in this game? No, more in this, definitely more in this game. Yeah. yeah because we found out that we were going to split off and Brock was going to go with, you know, Brock was going to go with his team and I was going to go with, with Sonny. And so, but I knew that we, that was going to be fun to set up. So it would make the, this the story was structured so well that, that uh -huh. as they became closer friends, what happened after the death and that, that argument scene was going to punch people in the gut even more or be even harder to, to accept. Mm. Uh, I was, excited to tell the transformation because I always, for me, working on Sindri, I always felt he had to have stuff going on underneath that motivated him to be so germophobic and nervous and placating and using humor all the times and kind of having this weird passive aggressiveness where sometimes his humor had a little bit of a tooth to it. Um, but this is what I mean. There's so much in intricacy with this character that you, you wouldn't usually get, would you? Let's be real. I, 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 I'll be political about that and just say, I just think this script allowed for it. And, and they allowed for it. And they, they allowed me to come in in 2018 and play and bring stuff in and 
you know, not, I wouldn't say flush it out because that's their job in the writing, but, but bring the, the, the emotional aspect of the story alive. But I, I certainly didn't, you know, people have said, well, where do you think Sindri goes next? And I was like, I don't know. That's up for the writers because I never would have predicted where he was going in Ragnarok. No, I mean, yeah. no one could have predicted that game. That's for yeah. sure. I think sometimes when you said, you know, were there other things you were excited about? I, I just think it's an opportunity to, I mean, that had everything going on. There was, there was movement changes and voice changes and, and physicality changes and those, those epic, epic scenes. And the fact that we were going to shoot for a video game, we were going to shoot a scene that had no dialogue with the exception of three lines. Wow. wow. Mm. I say I love you, Brock. You know, didn't even think of that. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, Mamir says a hole, and then um, Chris says, uh, "I think all he said is Sindri Brock was," and that was it. And otherwise, wow. it's all just that Bears Bear McCreary's incredible score. Oh, he his score is sensational Dude. in both games. That guy is talented. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm an absolute oh. soundtrack fanatic since I was a kid. So get a chance to meet him and hang out to him. And I, I got to go over to his studio and, and hang out for a bit. And, man, that was, yeah, he's a really cool guy. He's a really cool guy. The guy's just incredible. Just a I genius. That, just a genius. I mean, I know that he, there was a lot of conversations with, I mean, I've read this in interviews he gave. There's a lot of conversations with uh, Eric and Corey about what musical ideas he had and fleshing out rhythms and all that stuff and themes. And I know that for the funeral, he had watched some of the video footage and he, he had, he had said, he said, yeah, I, I watched some of, some of what you guys were doing, um, to give him, I think, I think he had the, th I think the struck, I think from what he said, he had it written anyway, but there was maybe little nuances or stuff he changed based on once he understood what it was going to look like and what was going to happen. I remember the scene distinctly. Like I remember the music when I think of the scene, I, th yeah. I don't know if you're the same, yeah. the bag, the haunting yeah. sort of bagpipe yeah. theme. It's stuck yeah. in my head. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. And it's the same throughout the entire game. There's 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 many moments with just that that haunting, beautiful score, mm -hmm. um, and it's you know a testament to him. And mm -hmm. I mean, everyone is at the top of their game. Let's be honest. What what about um, your relationship with with Brock with Robert? How did that develop over the over the ten year stretch? I remember early on, we all went and did an outdoor survival <laughs> course for a day, and that's when I met everybody. Uh, and I kind of got to know him there. And then he's just such a pro. He's just such a pro. And I don't know. I don't know how we got along. It just kind of seemed effortless. He's just a, he's just a big, great, open hearted, you know, Texan. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where he's from. And it just, I think just it just worked. I think it just, I think it real. I think that Dan, you, there was, I think it just worked. There was no chemistry tests or nothing like that. It was just two actors set to do a job yeah. and it just worked. I didn't meet him until we did the first read. Wow. Yeah. Man. So we did the first read through. And then we just and I I saw what he was doing and we kind of both under I understood that, you know, when they said the we come together at the end of the first game and reforge our, you know, our brand or whatever you want to call it, that I thought, okay, so there are two parts. I always yeah. thought I always thought Brock got to be Brock has all the qualities that 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 people think are cool that they'd want to have about themselves. He's brash. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> says what he wants. He's kind of you know messy and gruff and all that stuff. And I thought Sindri has all the character quality qualities that we're all embarrassed we have. He's nervous. He he gets anxious. He gets needy. He wants love. He's you know it's all the qualities that people. Are, are 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 think people are going to judge them for and Sindri wears them all on his sleeve because he has no choice that's interesting yeah. i haven't so thought about it like that yeah yeah between the two of them they kind of make a well, a well-rounded human well i have to ask you about the 
the death scene. I know you've answered it before, but I'm I'm just curious, shooting that on the day, how you were feeling leading up to that scene and how you felt after it. And was there an embrace with the team? Had he oh. come down from something like that? Yeah, just walk us through the whole thing because it's it's fascinating to me. And by the way, congratulations. It's it's an incredible scene. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Um I was, I was, I think you always get, or not, I don't think you, but I always get nervous when there's, there's scenes because you, you know, you have to, like, there's no choice. You, you gotta be there in the moment on the day, blah, 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 blah. Um, and also sometimes those things like the, you know, the famous one is the, the movie where they, they show up at the door and the woman comes to the door and they say your dad or your your husband or your child is dead and she drops to the floor weeping well that's not usually how people react in real life they don't you know it's not that instantaneous they're usually in shock for a while so sometimes you get those scenes you're like this this is real but it's also not real but um and then i think what i always do is i again i'll look at the script and see what what Sindri was saying and what those words meant to me. And then you just kind of got to let go. And I mean, my God, what you really want as an actor is to be able to look in your fellow actor's eyes and see a truth. And Robert was really amazing in what he did because I, I, it felt like somebody was saying goodbye. And Danielle was extraordinary so that wherever I was looking, I was getting the, the, what you needed. Yeah. I was getting the reality of the situation reflected back at me. And then of course I, I, I do my, you know, you do what you have to do to imagine yourself in those circumstances. Not only was my, did I just watch my brother die at a knife from my kitchen in a place I have built to protect my brother, but he's killed by the enemy in my own home. And not only that, I know what my brother dying means because of his, because of, he doesn't have a soul bit. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good impression. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a lot of weight to that, isn't there? Yeah. And I think that's just, uh, you know, everybody works differently, but, you know, when I kind of parse it down to those elements, it's hard not to get upset. Yeah, and yeah. Everybody was. Everybody was. That was a. That was a, a special day. It was a tough, tough day, but I remember everybody was. Everybody was on set for that. Even if they weren't working, people had from the their waiting in the green room. People had come on set just to stand in the corner and watch it, and. I'm so you kidding. noticed you noticed more people for this scene than usual. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, no. I shouldn't say that. No. The, the actors that were there that day that weren't in that scene but had just shot or about to shot, they they came to set. Yeah. To kind of be supportive. So it just felt really, you know, we were all we were all in it together. It felt like, and and we did it, and I think there was some technical tweaks. And I remember one take. I, I was getting all prideful about it because man, Robert and I were in it. We were in it and we were like, Oh, he's dying. And I'm, oh. and I look over at the monitor afterwards and they're all huddled around the monitor in the distance and they're absolutely silent. And I was like, we crushed this. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna come over sobbing and, <laughs> and they came over very somberly and I'm like, yeah, we did it. We did it. And they said, your, your camera rigs got, stuck together so, yeah we can't use that sorry guys yeah so i'm sitting there thinking yeah man yeah, uh, yeah. And they're like no you screwed it up um, hey that but, even that's tough i don't think people realize having yeah. something like that happens and you've got to reset it's not easy yeah. and figure out a way to and the funny thing was robert and i was figuring out a way for me to hold him that would look good on camera but that we could actually look at each other without the camera rigs getting in the way of course we yeah weren't gonna, we weren't there was so much of the game because of the height differences that you're actually not looking at the other actor's eyes like chris judd and i he was always <laughs> I, had a, I had a picture of sindri on my chest yeah and he 
somebody with Kratos on a pole above him. And that was our, a lot of time, that was our eye lines. Yeah, Rob said the same thing. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Don't think of that either. I think there were certain times where they would just, they would adjust the eye lines and post because Chris and I were just locked. There was I was going to say, yeah, sometimes you just can't help it, can you? Yeah. In the, the scene with Sonny, with, uh, with Atreus and Kratos after Brock's death. Yeah, I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking at Marks. No, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, how can you? Yeah, talk to us about that scene and and your relationship with with Chris over the years as well. He's a, jeez, he's he's unbelievable. That he's a, yeah. So Chris and I go way back to one of the first jobs I ever did was the pilot for the TV series Stargate. Wow. Yeah, which was in '98. So Damn. I, I worked with Chris back then. We had, we never, we, we didn't travel in the same circles, but we always, you know, wherever we ran into each other and all that stuff. So when I walked on to God of War 2018, that's I met cool. His son who had grown up, who I'd met as a toddler. And, um, and then when we came back for Ragnarok, but um, I just remember when we filmed that scene, as he was in this game with everybody, he was, a, he was a, an absolutely wonderful lead for people that aren't familiar with this kind of world that, a lot of times on a on a on a TV set, uh, the lead in a film set, the lead actor will kind of set the tone. And if the lead actor is insecure or braggadocious or egotistical or something, and, and treats people in a certain way, it very silently gives everybody else permission to behave that way too. What Chris did for this game is he came in and made sure the tone he set was that it was going to be very open. There was going to be a lot of laughter and there was going to be a lot of encouragement of actors just giving it their all, which creates a very protective space for people to really try and really, really, really deliver something memorable that, you know, might not be, Oh, I don't know if I should do this. You know, people might not like it or something. And he was like, no, 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 let's, let's do it. And I remember when we shot that scene, he was very, very protective of that space. And um, uh, I remember him and Sonny, he was kind of talking to Sonny a bit because a lot of this is new for Sonny. He's worked on some big stuff before that, but he was- He's only a young man, yeah. He was coming into his own, man. He came to this game ready to play. Did he? Uh, oh, yeah. Something in his eyes that that said, I'm ready. Yeah. And he, you know, the character was important to him and he wanted to tell the story and he wanted to, he, you know, he, he wanted to go to toe to toe with everybody. Um, and I remember they just, it was a very, and I, I think we only did that twice. Wow. Yeah. I think we only did that. I think we only did that scene. We only shot it maybe two or three times max. max. Yeah. Whereas the death, I remember seven or eight and me starting to think I was going to dry up. Jesus. Uh, yeah. yeah, that scene we didn't we didn't shoot much of. Um and the the line that breaks my heart is when when Atreus says, I thought we were his family, and Kratos says we were. That line breaks my heart. But and then and then for that scene, Sonny had all the tough stuff because he had to make the blocking work to make that single camera shot work. So he had all these arbitrary, he had to walk over here and walk over here and make that work for the camera to come around. Well, I was gonna ask you, because the games uh you know, they're, they're basically one shot in many respects. As you're playing through the game, there's no loading screens. You know, it's it's trying to do one simultaneous shot. Does that yeah. affect anything in your world, them achieving that? Does that change things yeah. for you? It does. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things in video games. One, if you get stacked one in front of the other, the computer, it doesn't work. So you have to be careful of that. And sometimes it's just a matter of moving so that what the gamer is seeing stays in that single shot thing, even though it feels a bit awkward when you're doing it. Yeah. So those, those always get worked out. But they were, they were always great about most of that stuff was blocked out before we even got there. The, 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 one of the toughest things about that scene in the forge was just screaming my head off at a 14-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> In it's not ways, something you do every day, is it? <laughs> no, in some ways, Sindri's a, a parent figure, but in, but in other ways, there was a, I think there was a part of Sindri that was also still trapped as a child. So in some ways, he's yelling 
in his rage and guilt and shame, he's yelling with somebody that seems like an equal. Like, you know, you see that sometimes on some of these reality TV series or stuff or, you know, I've been watching, I don't know how I got on it last week, but I was watching old episodes of a show called Hoarders and watching parents just dumping vitriol on their children and realizing that it's coming from a place of a lot of pain, but the effect of it is still horrible and not, and not right. There's nothing right about it, but, but, but kind of, yeah, unleashing on, <laughs> on Sonny. Yeah. So that, that scene was, that scene to me was actually more painful than the funeral, than the, um, than the death. Than the so, death. Yeah. You remember delivering the lines, I gave you everything, my skills, my oh. friendship. Man, that, that, that gives me goosebumps thinking about that. That's unbelievable, that scene. Yeah. And what I didn't realize, somebody pointed out, I, I, is that now when I look at it, he, he, it's almost like he gets younger and younger and younger with every one of those things. Cause I, somebody had forwarded me something where somebody was watching it. It was amazing what the gaming community is getting out of that and stuff that I'd worked on that they were seeing emotionally. But somebody pointed out, they said, if you noticed his voice gets higher and higher and higher. And it sort of breaks at a certain point. Yeah. Oh. And that it's almost, and I watched it. I'm like, it's almost like he's going back younger and younger and younger like everything he's giving up is closer and closer and closer and closer to who he was as a child until the final line is my family which would be him as a child when when he when you know he first realizes when 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 a child has enough consciousness to realize they have a brother and that reading that broke my heart because i didn't i hadn't but it, when you read that is it also fulfilling to know that your work has been has touched so many people in many ways i'm i'm very humbled by it and i yeah. and I, and i just think we we did it we we told the story and and sometimes like oh wow they picked up on that that's so cool oh wow they picked up on that but it it just it it more just really affected me that that people saw that people were, were, that young people nowadays are astute enough to see the effect of shame and rage and grief and not take it personally. That they can see somebody behaving like that and say, wow, he's going through a lot instead of, um, like they had, they have enough self awareness and mm. self love that they can look at that behavior and think, that's your shit. And you need to go figure it out as opposed to looking at it and thinking, oh, I, I somehow deserve this. So I'm going to react against it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. yeah. There's so much nuance with the performance as well. Um, I don't know how it didn't keep you up at night. <laughs> I mean, if I had the burden of doing this, I, I don't. Yeah, I'm not an actor, but I mean, it's. It, how do you how do you go home every night and and sort of decompress after all this emotional scenes and even when it's not emotional I mean they're long days aren't they They're long days but but I guess I would say have you ever had a, a what seemed like a herculean task in front of you that was mm. going to take a lot but then how do you feel when it's done mm. Well it's I feel rewarded you know yeah. yeah it's rewarding isn't it when you do something hard yeah. Yeah. I think it's like anything. You feel exhausted and exhilarated at the same time. But there are moments where even now I'll just have that little moment where you're like, oh, God, did we? And I'm like, we did it. <laughs> it, it, it it's told. I think the first time when you were saying Corey's reaction, I'm not trying to piggyback on it, but I think when the game came out, I hadn't seen anything. And then when the game got released, somebody had uploaded to YouTube, some of the, some of the scenes and somebody had sent me, um, I think the forge scene. Yeah. I saw it completed. And I just remember being really overwhelmed 
just watching it and watching what the, all the characters were going through and how beautiful it was and the incredible job the animators did, but just an absolute relief that we'd, from what I was seeing anyway, that we'd pulled it off. How did you consume Ragnarok? Because it's a long game. And I know people are quick, myself included, getting cutscenes and stuff out on YouTube. Do you sit there with a bit of popcorn and just sit back and watch it? Or I mean, because it's I, I've still I've just seen it on I've just seen it on what I've seen on on social media or YouTube or stuff like that. Yeah, right. Watch those scenes or watch stuff that you know they they had shown us, but all but all after I didn't see anything until the game came out. So it, yeah, gamers were seeing it. That's when I was seeing it. And then you see these floods of messages, and then I mean. I don't think I've ever seen a game with this many BAFTA nominations. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. The entire yeah. cast is basically nominated. It's incredible. Is that yeah. flattering? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, it's so surreal that, again, when I, when, I, when I got to go over there and with so many people from the game and the other games and all that stuff, I just thought I, I will most likely never be here again and and just getting there was reward but but even beyond that the fact that i thought okay there's so many of us here which means we did the job we told this epic story the the audiences appreciated it resonates with them that was that was so amazing and then just to be at the baftas and just think well this is just this weird thing on top of it that I that I'm so deeply appreciative for and I'm absolutely honored by um but I again I you're just kind of drinking it in cuz you're like this is I don't think I, I don't I don't know that I will ever be there at this moment with this type of project that's taken this long for 10 years with people responding this way ever again like I grew up idolizing the British actors and the Shakespearean actors and all that so to get nominated for a BAFTA from this kid that had dreamed about going to Oxford or RADA or these schools and watching Ian McKellen and Derek Jacoby and these, you know, Maggie Smith and these Judy Dench, these incredible actors. And then to get, to get acknowledged by the same awards organization that gives out the British Oscars and all that stuff was just, it's just, it's still, I, I, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's just such a, it's a, just a wonderful thing that life gave me. I would have loved to seen Robert get nominated as well and I for know. a few things. And, but you know, it, it is what it is. I think yeah, everyone and, knows. Yeah. And Alistair and Ben and, you know, yeah. there's just, I, I th- and I think that's sometimes part of it is that, you know, I, I'm I'm very, 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 very fortunate that that my work as Sindri got acknowledged. But I think too, I'm just lucky because the writing, you know, created moments in the game that resonated, and you know the fact that that Sindri's story was the last thing you saw on screen. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to belittle it, and I'm not trying to. Um, look down on BAFTA and their nominating committee and the choices they were using. But I also just recognize I was very, very, very lucky in, in the story that was told that it was going to, that it resonated. And I think the, I think me getting acknowledged with a, with a BAFTA nomination really also acknowledges and, you know, hundreds of people that worked to, to create a storyline. Yeah, I guess that's what I was trying to say, that your character is actually an embodiment of so many people that have, you know, it's it's a team effort in many respects, yeah. I mean, I just think about the funeral scene alone, the the detail of the animation to to, um, protect and translate what I did on the day, which is what Eric said. He's like, dude, we just, there's nothing added. We just cleaned it up. We cleaned up eye lines, but that was, that was performance. And I didn't realize that was how performance capture was working. I thought that they, you kind of gave them a blueprint and then they went over and created a bunch of stuff. But the detail that I can, that I'm looking at a two-dimensional image and I can see 
the very, very minor emotional things they're going through. Like there's even a moment where I, th- I think he's Brock's been put out and they've lit the funeral pyre and, and I'm, I'm Sindri's having this moment. And then you hear Kratos say Sindri or something like that. And in a millisecond, you see the, ex- and I remember it because I got really angry when he met, when he said Sindri's name, you can see Sindri going from pain to cold rage and i remember just being so blown away that the work they did that how difficult that actually is to make the subtleties that, tra- that mm. subtlety play yeah i'll give you a few more adam and we we really appreciate your time today um did did this game teach you anything about about grief or loss i think it it reminded me how complicated grief and loss is. How uh, how grief and loss deals with a person from every age they've ever been in the relationship they have to the person that's died. That it's not just them grieving at whatever age Sindri is as an adult, but it's the, the child in a person grieving. It's the teenager in a person grieving. It's all the different ages of relationships you've had with somebody. You know, it's like if you lose a pet or the family dog, there's, there's a part of you that's a child grieving. That, and, I, and I think it, it reminded me of that. I think it reminded me that grief and loss can be really ugly. Um, I think it reminded me that people who are going through grief and loss aren't rational sometimes. Um, I know when I've gone through a significant loss, uh, I was reminded by friends that I should just wear a a T-shirt that says I am not responsible for any emotional outburst in the next year. And that you, you just, you're just patient with yourself and gentle with yourself and just mark the days and, and get through it. And give yourself time as well. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. And it's what I've learned just to give yourself space. Yeah. 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 And then I think with Sindri, I think exploring that swing from, from going all the way into a, an, into a dark rage and, you know, taking on his brother's mannerisms and his hammer and his way of walking and trying to empower yourself through it. And just, just getting to that point where he's just depleted, completely depleted. And, you know, people said, what do you think happens to Sindri after the game? And I said, well, I think that's up to the, the people at Sony Santa Monica. But I said, I would imagine that maybe he just goes sit somewhere and doesn't really move for a lot of months. Have you, have you thought about the possibility of returning to this character and how you'll tackle it in the future? Oh. Because, yeah. I, I, I'm not trying to click bait you or anything to say anything. I'm just really curious what, and I'm trying to word it the right way, but have you thought about, you know, if there is a next chapter, mm. what, how are you going to do this? Cause there's, there's a lot there. Well, the first thing I thought I had was um, if they do do something, I hope they don't wait too many years. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> you know, I would love to, I would love to, I would love to revisit this character any way they had. I think what Sony Santa Monica di- does is extraordinary in their storytelling. And I'd be so fortunate to be involved in it. Yeah. As far as what they might do with it, I couldn't even begin to. Oh, no, it. no, 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 no. And I'm not, I don't think you're trying to clickbait me, but when you say, you know, how would I approach it? My honest answer is, is I have no idea because I have no idea what they're going to come up with. Yeah. I know. Because yeah. I never would have predicted Ragnarok. Oh, uh, no. Do I have, you know, do, do I have, how would I like Sindri to resolve all this conflict and all that stuff? I sure. Uh, but who knows? You know, Sindri could never speak to Atreus again. They could be broken. 
They could be broken brothers. That got, that bond could be broken forever, or they could, you know, have a a reuniting someday, or something. Would that hurt you? Would that hurt you if that was where it went? There was no resolution. Oh, yes, because yeah. yes, because I would just because it would mean that Sindri is in is in stuck in very deep pain mm. for the rest of his existence. Yeah. And that would, that would, that, 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 that hurts me, it, but it, it could be a reality. That's a truth. There are people mm. that they do that. We all have friends and relatives. We see unresolved relationships that just people get prideful and they can't apologize and, you know, or they're victimy or, you know, there's, I've, I've seen people whose entire lives have played out. And then at the very end, they, they kind of have a bit of a reckoning, but they don't have time to to even recognize, or they do have time, but they realize it's too late. And I, I've, I've always, I don't know, man, I don't think we're here for very long. And I, I just think, you know, if you have people that you love, you tell them. We've got to be kind, don't we? We've yeah. got to be kind. We've got to, we've got to tell everyone we love them. Yeah. You tell them you love them. Do your best to to be brave and face the ugly mirror and deal with your shit and your ego and and cop to what you're responsible for. But don't get drawn into what somebody else is responsible for. And sometimes you got to set boundaries and all that stuff. But I just don't. I just. I just. I just think there's. You know, we don't have a lot of time. I don't. I. I just don't think there's. There needs to be time for all that crap. But yeah, we're human and we all fuck up. And we all- <laughs> That's right. That's right. Even in that mirror. That's exactly right. Did you want to say anything to the fans of God of War? Is there anything you'd you'd like to say to them here today? Yeah. I'm I don't think this would I, I know I wouldn't be sitting here talking with you, Dan, and being invited to join your podcast if it wasn't for all the fans. I'm 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 so grateful that I got to to go on this journey and that, you know, Sindri in the first game and Brock the the fans embraced i'm so grateful for that i didn't even realize when they came out with funkos that that was a thing <laughs> yeah you know? rob showed me the other day the, yeah, the funko I pack had, again i had no idea but that's all because of the fans and all because of the people and i think um i got to go to a convention and one thing that really really touched me was that um what we did in this game made you the fans experience something that you liked and when i've met people what I'm hearing you say is you you made me feel something and I'm grateful that you made me feel that. And I'm 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 I mean I know it sounds all artsy fartsy or whatever, no. but I'm really honored that I got to be a part of that. Um and tell that story. Um and I just I thank you for all the love and support and things you've sent and all the love you've given to everybody involved in the game because um yeah, I uh, you know those things don't happen very often and I'm 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 very honored to be a part of it. So thank you. And I can tell just by speaking to you today that the passion it just seeps through the screen even though we're not in person. I'd love to do this in person, but even oh, over yeah. Zoom I can just I can just see the passion that you have for this game, the character. And I always love to see that that when when the actor really connects with the character and the story and it just makes it that much sweeter, I feel. Thank you for saying that. I think also with, I mean, you don't, again, I'm not that experienced in the gaming community, but I, I don't see characters like Sindri coming along. No. That all, that you I've played play. a lot of games, Adam. I love yeah. me too. <laughs> oh, I, I can tell. I can tell your knowledge is, is incredible. Let me tell you, I've played a lot of games. I have never seen a character like this written, performed. It's really special, man. So... And I, really, I, yeah. I feel the same way you do. Yeah, yeah I, I'm. I'm just thankful to be alive when games like this are being made. You know, it's it's really do you know incredible. In a weird way, I know we're getting very spiritual here and all that stuff. But yeah, yeah, that kind of gives me inspiration sometimes. Like when you have shitty days and things aren't going well, and you know, over here we're in a we're in a writer strike and now a SAG strike, and we just came out of COVID, and then. 
you know, there was social unrest and trying to equalize the playing things. It's been a really challenging bunch of years. But you saying that about being alive when a game like this comes along, or what I hear you saying is, I'm glad I was alive when an experience came along that made me feel so much, is that it does give me hope because you don't know what's around the corner, good mm -hmm. or bad, but you you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And that, that, that there are there are wonderful things that are coming down that might be coming not just not just the the fear factor that news has become or you know every time you turn something on everything is burning everything is horrible and then um, there is some truth to you know times are changing and things are getting tougher but i loved what you just said mm. i try to be hopeful and and keep positive which is and and that one of the reasons is i, I don't I can't watch the news because it is very depressing a lot of the time, yeah. especially in Australia. It's it's a lot of just killing and this and that, and there's not many positive stories. So I try to seek out as much positivity as I can. Um, yeah. I know well, you're, you're right. probably the same. Yeah, and you're right. It's hard. It's, mm. it's not easy. It takes it takes effort to you know. But like I said, when you say things like that, I just thought you know that's true. There's you know, things do, things do happen and cool stuff comes along. Sometimes it's a video game. Sometimes it's a great wave. Sometimes it's a <laughs> friends yeah. and family. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Thank you for the chat today. It's a, it's been a real pleasure. Um, is there anything, is there anything going on with you? I know you've got an acting studio and social mm -hmm. medias that you want to shout out. Anything else that you want to shout out? Please do. Oh, okay. Uh, well, for me personally, I can be found at adamjharrington.com on Twitter and Instagram. And then I also teach and coach and kind of how you're hearing me talk is kind of how I approach things. And that's at Harrington Studio. And that can be found on Instagram. And I do, I teach out of LA and I coach over Zoom and just starting to do workshops. Did one in New York. Um, going how are they going? There. Good? Really, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I love them. I, I, I love acting. I love storytelling, but there's, there's something in helping other people realize their dreams. That's just such a cool thing to get to be a part of. I love that. I love it. That's the one thing that you love about it, you know, yeah. very selfless, but yeah. no. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I just think I'm grateful to be part of it, but I'm, yeah, yeah. Grateful, so I'm getting something out of it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's both ways. It works both ways. But um, thank you very much, man. Uh, before I let you go, I'd love to end these with, if if it's possible, is there anything Sindri can say to Dan to wrap this one up? Oh, oh. <laughs> because, so I imme I'm sorry, this happens every time. I immediately go into, <laughs> we called him Savage Sindri. <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, whatever syndry comes out, comes out. I am. Um, oh, okay. You know, it I'm is. I'm going to paraphrase this, but um, can I tell you the best advice you're going to hear today or maybe ever? Sleep. That's where all the troubles of your mind work themselves out. That's, is that, is that table filthy? Is that dust? Oh, God. <laughs> is that blood? Is that blood in the corner? <laughs> Oh, no. Just, I'm going to need a minute. Oh, I think we should wrap up. Even just hearing that voice brings back so many memories. Mm. Oh, thank you, Adam. Thank you so much for oh. today, mate. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, Dan.